A year ago, Jessica Vandenberg didn't imagine she would be roaming the hills of one of the most famous roofs in the world. Inspired by entomology professor and academy president, Dr. John Haffernick, her interest in insects and plants blossomed into a research project on the academy's living roof. I was an ecologist and I was interested in plant and insect interactions. And then when I decided to come to San Francisco State, I furthered that interest and decided to focus more on entomology since insects are a great bioindicator of the environment. When Jessica began her research, the green roof was still under construction. The first seedlings were planted in May of 2007. It creates a great opportunity to look at a single community because it's almost like an island within the Golden Gate Park setting. Today the roof is like an oasis of native California plants in the midst of mostly non-native plantings in Golden Gate Park. The green roof was first planted with California natives, um, nine different species, both annual and perennial. And so I'm looking at what insects will be attracted to such a space from the surrounding Golden Gate Park, which is mostly comprised of non-native plant species. So far I have found over the course of the year, there are more native species, native insect species found on the roof than in the surrounding area down below in the rhododendron garden that have also been sampling. Trapping and collecting the insects is a community effort. For Jessica and student volunteers, it can take up to two hours to check 90 traps located on the roof and in the gardens around the academy. One type of trap captures ground-dwelling insects. A pitfall trap samples ground-dwelling insects. It's open for three days, and during that time, um, insects that are walking along the ground fall into the trap. Another type of trap targets flying insects like bees, wasps, and flies that visit flowers for nectar and pollen. The prunella is blooming quite well and the bumblebees are really attracted to it and there's a lot of buzz going on, literally. Um, there's also a lot of pygmy grasshoppers jumping around as we walk up there. Samples from each trap are collected into jars and taken back to the lab where Jessica begins to sort through the insects and debris to identify what she is finding. Visually, it seems that bumblebees and honeybees and metallic carabid beetles are really abundant up there. There's, they're easy to see. They're large, charismatic insects. But when I come back to the lab and I look at the sample under the microscope, it's really the little things that run the world. And there's lots of diversity in there. From large crickets and bumblebees to minute parasitic wasps, Jessica carefully records everything that she finds in the samples some of what she is finding may have come from 200 miles away. We so far found at least two stowaway species. The metallic carabid beetle, which is a little ground-dwelling beetle, it's very beautiful, um, but it's in high abundance and it's actually native to Carmel Valley where the plants were raised. There's also a small pygmy locust. The interesting thing will be to see as the roof matures if those two stowaway species are actually able to survive on such a harsh roof environment. When comparing the two insect communities, one on the roof and the other in the surrounding park, Jessica sees a lot of differences. The biomass of the community down below is a lot greater than that on the roof, which is to be expected. The plants down below are a lot more matured and there's also trees and shrubs, and the community on the roof is only about a year old. So that's to be expected. However, on the roof there's a lot more diversity than found down below. One tiny wasp is especially abundant. In the samples, there have been quite a few parasitic wasps, which to the naked eye can look just like a grain of sand. But under the microscope, they have a lot of very interesting, ornate um, characteristics. So I've found about 20 morpho species so far, but I haven't found very many at all down below. The roof's hilly landscape may also affect which insects are falling into each trap. On sunny days, there are more insects in the exposed traps. The roof's hilly landscape has created quite a few different microhabitats. The flat expanses are sunny while you know the hills provide shade. On a bright sunny day, the flat expanses do really well because there's lots of flowering prunella, so we get quite a few flower visitors. But on breezy days, the hills provide protection from the harsh winds and more insects are found in sheltered traps. One interesting outcome of my research might help it may help future decisions in green roof plantings. One interesting thing is just to look at is, um, is plant function as opposed to plant origin more important? So it's quite a privilege to have gotten to do this for the past year.